everybody, welcome back to 3 Day Weekend. I got Dwight in the shop. Dwight is our 2018 Polaris Ace. It's under Sportsman. Ace 570. And it's just not starting right. I'm cranking and cranking. I'll show you in a minute. It just doesn't want to start. I have a brand new uh, spark plug in it. It's getting fuel. It's getting, obviously, spark. Uh, we checked the throttle body. The throttle body is nice and clean. Air box, no obstructions, anything. It's just not happy about starting. Once it does start, though, she runs great. So why does it have such a hard time starting? We're going to find out. Let's do it. Here's what we got. Ignore all this. We're changing universal joints, uh, among some other things. But here's what's happening when you try to start it. Fuel pump. Listen for that. Hear it? Fuel pump's running. Now, nope. sputters stalled. See, it just doesn't want to start. If you feather the throttle just a little bit, you get it to start up and then it'll idle, it'll run great. It, it runs perfect for the remainder of the day and for the rest of the day, it'll start up perfectly fine. That initial should start. It, it just doesn't want to start. So we're gonna check valve lash today. That's the plan. The valves are in here on top of the engine. So let's take off this little firewall. We're gonna take out that little panel and get to the valve cover. Here's our valve cover. It's really not that hard to get off. We're gonna, oh my gosh. We're gonna take that spark plug out, uh, blow compressed air and clean that out a little bit, and then we've got three bolts holding the cover down. Uh, they look like they're Torx 40s. And these valves are not adjustable like you would hope they are. They are tappets. So we need to measure the clearance between the tappets and the cam there's a little gap in there to see what we have. And then if it's out of spec, we have to order uh, different size tappets to uh, make the gap correct. Um, normally at this point, you set it to top dead center. However, I can see that these lobes are up, so I can at least check the exhaust valves the way it sits. And then I'll turn the engine just a little bit to get these lobes up. And then I'll check the intake valves. Here's our specs we're looking for. I'm gonna check the exhaust valve first because that one is already clear. And then we'll start the intake. So let me grab my feeler gauges and we'll get started on that. Exhaust should be 0 0.010. Boy, that feels loose in there. I don't know if I mentioned, uh, you can't check compression on these because it does have an exhaust um, decompression system in here. So if you do try to run a compression test, you only get about 30 pounds. So uh, that's really an inconclusive test, but boy, that is loose. I'm at 0 .010, I'm allowed 0 .002 inches of play. I feel like I have a lot more than that, so let's step it up to the next size and see what I got. Here's 0 .012, oh boy. Let's step it up, 0 .015, yeah, oh my goodness. 0 .020. I can get about 0 .026 in there. That is a huge gap. But I can't get it into this one. This one is very, very tight. So, let's start over, 0 .010. Sorry for the beeping. can't get 0 .010 in there. <clears throat> that one is tight. 0 .008. Ah, 0 .008 goes in. So we're at 0 .008 on this one, 
and we're at 0 0.026 on this one, which scares me. Like, is there something wrong with this one? Oh, oh, okay. Here's what's happening. I know what's going on. This one is all the way up. This one, I can actually see the decompressor pushing on the exhaust. Let's see if I can show that to you. I don't know if you can see that. See that little pin right there? It's pushing down on the edge of this tappet. That is the decompression system right there. So this is centrifugal force. It swings that out when it's just sitting still. When it's moving, it pulls it back so that you get a good seat on it. So that's why my gap is so big on that exhaust side right there. So I'm going to turn this engine to top dead center, which I probably should have done in the first place. And we'll try that again. All right, here looking at the valves. To turn it to top dead center, we're looking at this little guy right down there. That's your crank position sensor. We're gonna pop that out and we're looking for a little arrow on there when we're at top dead center. Uh, but in order to turn the engine, we're going to either take the cover off your belt drive system, unless I can get just enough to turn off of maybe one of these bolts here without taking that apart. Let me see if I can do that. So we can turn this by cheating it off the crank very carefully. The engine, we gotta turn it that way. Oh, and I'm guessing that was uh, just passing top dead center right there. It really isn't taking much to turn it. At the end, there are two slots on this side, which look like timing marks. So I'm just roughly lining that up. And I'm betting that's gonna be pretty close to top dead center. I'm gonna pull that cap off and see if we got it. I've got it lined up top dead center. Here's what I had to do. <laughs> I had to take my cell phone, and put it in video mode with my flash on, Stick it right here, looking down, and from there, I was able to see top dead center mark on the phone. Now let me record it. There, that's what the top dead center mark looks like. That little tiny triangle needs to be pointing straight at the bolt. Now that we're at top dead center for real this time, let's double check my measurements from before. Ah, now point. 010 is tight on both sides. 0.008 is snug. So the exhaust valves are a little tight. That one's a little looser than this one. So I'm going to say 0 0.008 on both of those. On my intake, my fancy big angled gauges don't fit in here. Oh, that one's tight. That one's tight. 0 0.006 is too tight. Let me keep measuring these. I'll let you know the final result. We've got 0 0.001 on the intake valves. That is, that is tiny. So this is why it's not starting. The valves aren't closing all the way. So we got to get some different tappets in here. Some different uh, size tappets. There is a calculator available online, but in order to get the right readings, you have to take out the current tappets to know what size they are. And then it'll tell you which size you need to get in order to get the correct gap on these. So in order to do that, you gotta take all this stuff apart. So we'll be doing that now. To remove the tappets, we have to remove the cam shafts. In order to get the cam shafts out, we have to remove the carrier, and the carrier is held in by eight eight millimeter bolts. As soon as I remove that carrier, this kind of popped out of place. We'll have to worry about that tensioner down below. I'm going to try to do this in such a way that I don't upset the timing chain at all. And just kind of move them out and work them past that way. So we've got our intake tappets right there. We just got to pull those out and then we'll work on the exhaust tappets. And these are magnetic, so you can use a magnet to pull them out. There we go, got that one. 
Make sure you remember where these went. One there, there you go. Got our valves all out. If you flip them over, you'll be able to read a number in there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on the camera, but there, it's on the bottom inside. That one says 508. So that's our current shim height on there. That one says 510. Oh, I think you can see that one. And both of these are 488. There you go. So we're gonna use that number when we get our new ones. So let's stop right here. We've got the taffets out. We know what we're looking at. Next thing we need to do is some math to find out what shims we need to order to open up that gap a little bit. I'm gonna show you both kinds of math uh, next week. Um, what we need to do if you wanna lower that gap, for example, if your valves are, are clattery, making a bunch of noise. And then in our case, what we need to open that gap because they're just too tight and letting some of our compression bleed off and that's what's giving us the hard start issue. Spoiler alert, it does run. But I just realized this isn't the one, it's down in the barn. It does run, so in the end, everything works, so there you go. So tune in next week, we're gonna finish this project up, get that thing running once again. If you haven't considered subscribing, I appreciate it if you did. I'll put the button right here, all you gotta do is click on it. I really appreciate every viewer, every subscriber. Special shout out to those members, you guys are awesome. Really appreciate the support. All right, well that's gonna do it for me today. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you here for another video on Three Day Weekend.